to our big game extravaganza. Oh yeah, we're making amazing dishes today. You're going to see them popping up on the screen. And you don't want to miss our amazing halftime cocktail. <gasps> so good. You'll find all the recipes on our Facebook page at Poppy's Cucina, at on our uh, YouTube page under the community tab, and also at the end of the video. I'll have them all posted. All right, so let's get started. What are we making today? <gasps> First up in our big game extravaganza, we're making something so delicious, so easy, you're gonna love them. That's right, we're making air fried calamari. Let's get started. Yum. So let's prep our calamari. So here I have one pound of calamari um, that I thawed in the fridge. So if you have them, you don't want to cook them frozen, definitely don't want to do that. Um, make sure you rinse them out. And then if you buy the whole squid, you want to make sure you pull out that plasticky piece of cartilage that's inside. All right, so now what we're going to do is going to cut these into half inch rings. Make sure your knife is sharp. <laughs> All right, easy so far, right? Nice. Just like that, and into a bowl they go with one cup of milk. And we're going to let them soak in here for about 30, 45 minutes. It's going to make them super tender and so delicious. All right, so we're going to let these sit. And while we're waiting for our calamari to soak, in this resealable bag, I have one cup of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and then we're gonna add some salt and pepper to taste. Then we're just gonna give it a good shake to mix it all up, and then we're just gonna wait for the calamari. So 45 minutes has passed, and I drained uh, the calamari from the milk. And so now we are gonna add them right to the flour mixture. Try not to grab any more of the moisture than you need. Oop, last one. All right, now we're just going to shake them up and get them nice and coated. Easy, right? So here I have my air fryer basket that I preheated at 400 degrees for five minutes, and I sprayed the bottom with a little bit of vegetable oil. So now we are going to add our calamari in a single layer. So we don't want them overlapping. I'm just going to put these off. You want to tap off the excess flour. We don't want them to be too gummy. All right, so we're gonna keep adding these in a single layer, just like that. You're gonna spray them with a little bit of the vegetable oil, and then into the air fryer, they're gonna go at 400 degrees for about five, six minutes. You're gonna to wanna to give it a shake halfway through. All right, but nice, fast, and easy. And six minutes later, they're done. Look at them. Oh, they look so crunchy and delicious. Now we're gonna cook the rest of them. Bon appetito. Mmm. -hmm. So crunchy, not chewy. Don't have to worry about all that grease. What are you gonna do with it? Amazing. What are we gonna make next? Uh. Next up, we're making these unbelievably delicious, <gasps> so easy to make, chicken parmesan sticks with an amazing dipping sauce. Yes, please. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is prep our creamy coating for our chicken. All right, so in this large bowl, I have one cup of mayonnaise, one teaspoon of dried basil, one teaspoon of dried oregano, one teaspoon of granulated garlic, and then salt and pepper to taste. Now I'm just gonna mix this together until you have a nice looking marinade. <laughs> just like that, and now we're gonna prep our chicken. So here I have one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken. Now we're gonna cut these into quarter inch sticks. So, like that. All right, and now we're just gonna slice these up to make them look like little fries. See, nice and easy. Into the marinade it goes. So I'll do one more. I need to put some paper towel underneath my cutting board. <laughs> All right, so. Just like that. All right, so now we're gonna do the rest of them. Just like that, and now we're gonna mix this all together till the chicken is nice and evenly coated with the marinade. Mm, smells good already. I feel like the smell of raw chicken. <laughs> and now they're ready to be coated. So we're gonna grab each of these little strips, and here we have about two cups of Italian-style panko breadcrumbs. I'm just gonna coat these nice, nice. Okay. Just like that. And there we have our chicken parmesan fry. All right, so now we're gonna do the rest of them. 
just like that. And so now we're ready to fry them up. So here I have my air fryer basket that I preheated at 400 degrees for five minutes. Sprayed it with a nonstick cooking spray. Now we're gonna lay these out in a single layer in the air fryer. Easy so far, right? <gasps> They're so good. Just like that. And now into the air fryer, they're gonna go at 380 degrees for about eight minutes. You wanna give them a turn halfway through. All right, but fast and easy, love that. So while we're waiting for the chicken Parmesan fries to cook, we're gonna make the dipping sauce. So you're gonna need one eight ounce brick of cream cheese. You wanna make sure this is very, very soft. Two cups of shredded mozzarella, along with two cups of a marinara sauce. You can use any kind of sauce you want. You can use homemade, but for something like this, a pre-made one is perfect. And if you've never tried this brand, it's fantastic. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna mix this all together and then put it into an oven safe dish. Just like that, and into a preheated 375 degree oven, it's gonna go just until it gets all nice and bubbly, probably like 20 minutes. 25 minutes, just keep an eye on it. You're gonna stir it up and it's gonna be the perfect dipping sauce. <gasps> Yum! It's all plated up and time to give it a try. Oh yeah. Bon appetito. Mmm. See that crunch? Mmm. It's like chicken parmesan. And it's thick. They're so good in that sauce. Everything! But now it's halftime, so you know what that means. Alright, so for today's Big Game Beast, that's right, we're going to start with one and a half ounces of vodka. One and a half ounces of rum. One ounce of whiskey. And we're going to do two ounces of sour mix. One ounce of peach bellini mix. And one ounce of strawberry daiquiri mix. So we're gonna give this good shaky shaky. And we pour. Ooh, that looks good. It's kind of pink, but. <laughs> Still gonna be good. Let's try it. Salute. Wow, there is a lot going on with this. It's tart, it's sweet, it's got the vodka burn, it's got a rum burn, it's got all the burns. Oh, and it's so good, it's such a great cocktail. Oh, it's so fun, you gotta try this. You do let us know. All right, let's see what we're making next. Let's keep going. Drake, what is it? You wanted to be in the halftime show? You too? But you didn't come to the rehearsals. I I can't just, you know, we just can't wing it. This is important. It's the big game. It's the big game. We got to take this seriously. All right? <laughs> uh, good thing you're cute. And we're back. Next up, we got these unbelievably delicious, <clears throat> so crunchy, crispy, air fried garlic Parmesan wings. Oh yeah, and look at that garlic Parmesan dipping sauce. Yes, yes! <gasps> so good, it's so easy! Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is prep our wings, because nine times out of 10 when you buy wings, they don't already come disjointed, they come like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim them. So here I have about four and a half pounds of wings, but once I'm done trimming them, it'll probably be around four pounds. So with a good pair of shears, what you wanna do is find the joint in between the wing tip. See, nice and easy already. And then you wanna find the joint between the drum edge. And just like that. See, nice and easy. So now we're gonna prep the rest of them. Just like that. And now we're ready to make our coating. So here in this resealable bag, I have one cup of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of cornstarch, one tablespoon of granulated garlic, and salt and pepper to taste. I'm just gonna seal this up. 
give a quick shake to mix up all the ingredients in there. And then we're going to add our wings right into the bag. Get it all in there. Fun, right? <laughs> and once you got all your wings in the bag, you're going to seal it up tightly and give it a good shake because we want this really nice coating all over that chicken. You got so much flavor. And it really, the cornstarch really makes the, the wings extra crispy. We love that. All right. That's it. So let's get that air fryer. Before we get the air fryer basket, you want to make sure you tap off the excess flour from the wings. So let's give it a little pat, pat, pat. Okay, because this is what it looks like first. So it has a nice thin coating all over it. Yay. All right, so I preheated my air fryer for um, for five minutes at 400 degrees. And now we're gonna add our now coated wings that we tapped off the excess flour into the basket in a single layer. Depending on the size of your air fryer, you could get anywhere from like eight to 12. Unless the wings are really small, they could get even more. I think with this one, this is a 5.8 quart. A few of you have asked me, I have the Kasori. I love this air fryer. <laughs> All right, so I think we got 12, right? Yep, perfect. So now we are gonna spray this with some vegetable oil. And now into the air fryer, it's gonna go at um, 400 degrees for about 24, 25 minutes. You're gonna see they're gonna come beautifully golden and brown, really nice and crispy and delicious. <laughs> Make sure you give the basket a shake every couple minutes or so. All right, but into the air fryer, it's gonna go. And while we're waiting for our wings to cook, we're going to make our dipping sauce. So here in this small saucepan, I have a quarter cup of salted butter, a quarter cup of a good virg extra virgin olive oil, along with eight cloves. That's right, eight. We love, you want the garlicky, right? Eight cloves of minced garlic. So now you're going to saute this pretty much just until the butter melts and the um, garlic just gets a little bit of color and becomes fragrant. Just a couple minutes. Just like that, you'll see the garlic became nice and golden. Oh, it smells so good. So now we're gonna add eight ounces of, that's right, you guessed it, mascarpone. If you don't have mascarpone, you can just add a cream cheese. We're gonna get this right in there. It's gonna melt up and make this so creamy and so good. You can even use um, mayonnaise if you want. But this is gonna make it that much creamier, I think. I've never tried the mayo. All right, so now we are just gonna mix this in until the mascarpone is all nice and melted. If you need to go back to the heat, go ahead, but do it over a low heat, because you don't wanna burn it, scorch it, or burn the, um, the garlic. All right, so we're just gonna keep mixing this. Just like that, and now to this, we're gonna add one cup of Parmesan cheese. this all together. Look at this. Look at this. Can you imagine dipping your wings in there? Or you can even toss the wings if you want. So you can see how it's, as it's going to cool a little bit. It's all going to congeal. It's going to be a beautiful dip. You can add some um, uh, parsley, chopped parsley to this. Just give it a little bit more color. Give it a little visual interest. All right, but Get those wings cooked, hurry up. <laughs> and once it thickens up, you want to adjust your seasoning. Give it a taste, see if it needs some salt, pepper, a little bit more garlic, but I think the garlic level is good, at least for me. But we're also gonna add half a teaspoon of rosemary. Now what the rosemary does, it just enhances that garlic flavor and the Parmesan and it just takes this to a whole new level. <gasps> it's so good. See? Like I said, give it a taste first. Make sure if you, to adjust the seasoning. Nice. Exactly 24 minutes later, the wings are done. Look at them. Oh, look how crunchy and golden they are. Oh, they're going to be so good. So now we're going to cook off the rest of them and give them a try. Oh, I can't wait. Bon appetit. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you hear that crunch? Oh, phenomenal. All that Parmesan, all the garlic, with these beautifully crunchy wings. Ah, oh, amazing. You have to try these. But what are we gonna finish this off with? We gotta finish strong. Oh yeah. All right, let's finish this episode strong with the ultimate party food, 
Who doesn't love bruschetta? Well, what about bruschetta nachos? <gasps> Shower guide! Oh, perfect for a party or just a fun night at home. <gasps> Yum! All right, so the first thing you need to do is we're going to make our bruschetta. So you're going to eat about a pound and a half of tomatoes. You can use Roma. Those are traditionally what are used for um, bruschetta, but I'm using these beautiful beefsteak ones. So first thing you're going to do is core them, and then you're going to cut each one into eighths. I'm going to do it in half, half, and half again. All right, easy so far, right? And then what you're going to do is we're going to take the seeds out. You don't have to, but what this does is it removes a lot of the excess moisture and gets rid of the seeds, <laughs> which just are going to end up getting stuck in your teeth anyway. So what you're left with is just the meaty part of the tomato. Nice, right? All right, so we're going to do that to the rest of them. Just like that. Now we're going to dice this up. You actually want to do a small dice for this. You know, there's a fancy French term for this size. I just can't think of what that is right now. <laughs> All right, so but like I said, you want to do it small. Nice little micro dice. These tomatoes are beautiful. Can't wait till they're in season. All right, just like that. Now we're going to do the rest of them. Just like that. And now next we're going to mince eight cloves of garlic. Four are going to be for the bruschetta, and four are going to be for the crostini nachos. All right, so best way to peel garlic, unless you want to have like those fancy roller things. Just crush with the back of the knife. And the skin should come right off. Kinda. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Foul on the foul on the field. <laughs> Just like that. And now we're ready for the basil. So here I have about a um, a cup, cup or so of loose basil, fresh basil. You definitely want to use fresh for this. Um, dry just won't do it. If you're lucky enough to have like a little herb garden inside your house, use that because it'll be amazing. I'm not lucky with basil inside my house, so I had to buy this. <laughs> Whereas my mother has the same basil plant she's had for about 20 years. <laughs> Go figure. All right, so now the best way to cut it is like you'll see, I've been stacking up all these basil leaves. Now we're gonna roll it. Doesn't have to be that tight. And then you're gonna make little slices. See how easy? And what you have is julienne basil. Isn't that crunch? Oh, and that smell. You can't beat the smell of fresh basil. And garlic and all that good stuff. Love it. I'm just gonna finish slicing this so I can show you what this looks like. Don't cut yourself. All right. You have streamers of basil. Isn't that fun? All right, so we're gonna cut the rest of it and add it to our tomatoes. And now we're ready to add our final ingredients. So to our minced garlic in a small bowl, I added a quarter cup of an extra virgin olive oil. Make sure you're using a good one that you really like because we're going to add the same one to the bruschetta. So we're going to add a quarter cup to this as well. Now we're going to add about three tablespoons of red wine vinegar, which is just under a quarter cup. There we go. And then we're going to add our salt. Doesn't really need anything else, but you will need a good amount of salt, maybe like half a teaspoon. There's a lot of tomatoes. And now we're going to mix this up. Oh, I forgot my spatula. There we go. And that's your bruschetta. How easy was this? Oh, I wish you could smell it. The flavors, the scents that are coming up, like the garlic, the basil, the tomatoes, you can smell the, the red wine vinegar. Oh, it smells fantastic. And that's it. And see, if you didn't take out the seeds, the whole bottom would just be a big liquidy mess. So taking out the seeds really helps. All right, so now we're gonna set this aside. And now we're gonna prepare and prep our crostini nachos. Fun. So here I have my baguette that we're going to cut into half inch slices. You don't want to do it this way. You want to do it on a slight bias. So just half inch little slices. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do it any thicker than that. All right. So you keep thin. All right. So we're going to keep slicing this up. 
just like that and onto a parchment lined baking sheet it's going to go and now we are going to brush this olive oil and garlic mixture right onto each of the crostini. Gotta get some of those nice garlic pieces, yeah. All right, so we're gonna continue to cover the wall. Just like that, and then on top of this, we are gonna put just a little chuf of shredded mozzarella. Only about a teaspoon, you don't need a lot. Just a light little coating on each one. Looking good so far, right? You're loving this? What do you guys think of these recipes? Do you like them? you hate them? Let us know in the comments, please. All right, we're gonna keep covering these with the cheese. Just like that, and now into a preheated 400 degree oven, they're gonna go for just about five, six minutes. You want the cheese to be nice and melted and the bread nice and crispy. So into the oven, they're gonna go. <gasps> Fun! Just like that, now we're gonna plate it up. So we're gonna arrange these nice, nice. Keep adding our crostini nachos. <laughs> so we arrange them in a single layer, and now with a slotted spoon, we're going to top it with our brusquet. Then just get it all over the top. And if some falls off the sides, that's fine. Because these are nachos. They're supposed to be messy. Fun. But try not to get too much of the liquid. That's important. That's why you want to use a slotted spoon. All right, so we're going to keep arranging. Just like that, and then we're going to arrange the rest right on top. If you want to make it a pretty pattern? You can, but it's still going to taste good, regardless how you set it up. And then we're going to put the remaining, remaining, just get that right on top. I'm just going to pile high. Isn't this fun? It's great for a party, and it's nachos. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna finish um, setting this up and then give it a try. Yum! Bon appetito. Mm. You hear that crunch? Oh my gosh! It's amazing. It actually feels like you're eating nachos, but with new skit on top. Oh, it's so good! You have to try this recipe. If you try any of our recipes, let us know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had fun today. I know I did. <laughs> so much food. <laughs> we'll see you again soon. Love you guys. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Poppy's Cucina. Thanks.